Okay, we're going to carry on looking at decimals. This time we're going to look up a method for multiplying together two decimal numbers. Um, the method I'm going to use is Napier's method, so I've gone through it with um, natural numbers. If you're able to multiply using your own method, that's fine, carry on. This is not necessarily better. I just find this quicker and more applicable. Okay, so we're going to do a couple of examples using it. Um, I'll show you why it's really useful, because this is where lots of people trip up when they're doing their column method. If you have decimals in the number, or you have lots of different um, lots of numbers in different place values, they struggle. Okay, so the first calculation we're going to look at, and if you want to, you can pause and have a go and see if you get the same answer as me, is 13.7 multiplied by 12. That's what we're going to try and work out. Right then, so I'm going to use Napier's as I said, so if you remember, you write a number across the top and down the side, so let's have 13.7 and let's have 12 down the side. Now you drew your grid. Every time I talk about Napier's method, I say the hardest part about it is drawing the grid. If you've got drawing the grid down, then the actual multiplication is never that hard and the addition after that is also not too bad. So you draw your grid like this, and then you have to do your diagonals. So it should look something like that. And in each of these boxes, you do your multiplication. So you do in this box, we're going to do 7 times 1, which is 7 and 0 tenths. 3 times 1 is 3 with 0 tenths. 1 times 1 is 1 with 0 tenths. 2 times 7 is 14, so that's 1 in the tens column and 4 in the units column. 2 times 3 is 6, so 6 is going to go there and a 0 is going to go there. 2 times 1 is 2, so 2 is going to go there and a 0 is going to go there. Okay, next up we add everything in our diagonals. So this diagonal here has only got a 4 in it, so 4 add nothing gives us 4. In this next diagonal we have 7, add 1, add 6. Well, uh, 1 add 6 is 7, 7 add 7 is 14, so I'm going to put a 4 here and I'm going to carry 1 over into this next diagonal. So this next diagonal we have 0, add 3, add 0, add 2, add 1. Well, 2 add 1 is 3, add another 3 is 6. Next up we've got 0, add 1, add 0, which gives us a 1. Okay, so here we have something that looks like an answer. Now, you may think that decimal, uh, having then decimals there has not changed anything. This is where uh, Napier's method is really good. Okay, so we want to look at where the decimal point would be for both of these numbers. So 13.7, we can see the decimal, it's just here. 12, now straight after the units, there would be a decimal here. You, if you wrote 12.0, it would not change that number. So there would be a decimal here. Now to work out where your decimal goes in your answer, you look at where these two meet, and then you follow that diagonal down. So the answer to this question, to 13.7 multiplied by 12, is 164.4. Okay, and that's how we know where the decimal is in our answer. Right, let's have a look at a slightly harder question. Again, if you want, you can pause it, do it your own method, and then see if we get the same answer. This time we're going to have, uh, let's do two, we'll call that question one. Uh, we're going to have 17.23 multiplied by 14.8. So 17.23 multiplied by 14.8. I'm going to do exactly like I did before. So we're going to have one, seven, two, three, let's put a decimal there, and we're going to have one, four, eight, our decimal's going to go there, draw our box, something like so, add your grid in, and your diagonals. Don't forget to extend your diagonals just beyond the last box. Okay. 
So this may look horrible, but this will save you lots of time compared to using grid method and writing out all them zeros or using column method and having to contain so much in your head. Right, let's work along the top row first. So you're going to do one multiplied by three, which is three, one multiplied by two, which is two, one multiplied by seven, which is seven, and one multiplied by one, which is one. Next row, four times three, 12, four times two is eight, four times seven is 28, and four times one is four. Then we have three multiplied by eight, uh, which is 24. Then we have two times eight, 16. And then we have seven times eight, which is 56. Then we have one times eight, which is eight. Okay, Whew. now we're gonna look at our diagonals. Um, okay, I'll grab a ruler, might make it a little bit easier. So in this diagonal here, we just have a four. So four added nothing gives us four. Let's look at the next diagonal. We have two, add two, add six. Well, two add two is four, add six is 10. So we're gonna put a zero here, and we have to carry a one over here. Let's look at our next diagonal. Right, so we've got three, add one is four. Four add eight is 12. 12 add one is 13. 13 add six is 19, add one. It's 20, so you put zero and put two into this column. Right, all these pair up nicely. We've got a two and an eight and another two and an eight. So that's 10, add 10, add five is 25. So we could have put a five there and a two up here. Let's look at the next one. Seven, add two is nine, add four is 13, add two is 15. So it's gonna be a five and a one up here. Zero, add one, add zero, add one is two. And then finally, zero up there. Okay, so let's have a look where our decimal is going to be. We have 17.23, 14.8. So our decimal is here, and our decimal is here. We're going to look at where they cross. Follow that diagonal down, and this is where your decimal is going to be. So the answer to this question, to 17.23 times 14.8 is, we don't need to include that first zero because we don't have any thousands. So it's going to be 255.004.